Okay. Gonna take a short break from the political stuff that's been on my channel lately. And I'm going to do another mediumship reading. And I've been really excited and looking forward to this one. I want to take a look at everybody's space mom, Carrie Fisher. And I was a huge fan of her. I've been a Star Wars nerd since I was a kid. And obviously that's the first, <laughs> the first uh, thing I ever saw her in. And I just kind of always admired how open she was, um, maybe towards like the later part of her life, how open she was about her health struggles and her emotional and mental health and um, the kinds of experiences that she'd been through and, and how certain things made her stronger and how she learned certain lessons and stuff like that. Um, I really just admired her strengths. And that's, that's something I've always really admired about her was just kind of her, her honesty about herself and just, she really didn't seem to be that ashamed of the illnesses that she had, nor should she have been ashamed, you know. We can't always help what goes on in our brains, but just how she was so willing to help others who were struggling with similar things as her. Anyways. Shuffle. Um, I did feel like she wanted me to pick the Housewives Tarot. And I have the Kawaii Tarot, um, just, you know, in case we want to use that one too. And we are going to go ahead and take a look at Space Mom. So I'm thinking we'll take um, a look a little bit at her life on Earth. And, of course, if she has any messages to pass along, then we'll do that. And then um, anything that she has to say from the other side. Because uh, she did pass away almost three years ago now, so that should be enough time to have gotten acquainted with the spiritual realm again. Not that time is really relevant or even a thing over there, but, you know. Anyways. Ah, and the spiritual side, she's just like, she's got it made. It's um, all of the joy and success that she had on earth just pales in comparison, she says. And that is, you know what? That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm glad for her that she's somewhere where she is comfortable and happy. So, okay. I'm going to take a quick second to sort of connect with my guides and to see if we can get this connection with Carrie going. And then we can begin. <clears throat> All right. I think I'm ready. I am sort of feeling like she's connected. I keep seeing an image of her face and she is smiling. And the thing about it is she's young. She is young like, young like ab about looking like the age she kind of was when she played Princess Leia. And maybe that's, she's just showing up like that because that's um, maybe how I would recognize her best. But why wouldn't you want to be young in heaven, she says. Why wouldn't you choose to be young again? I had some of my best fun in my 20s and 30s. She's funny. All right. So we're going to, I have three guides that came in, which is just interesting. Archangels Michael and Metatron. And then there's kind of this blonde guy that has been around lately. And he's like this blonde guy with, just white it's like a dress but it's not a dress but it's like a robe but it's not a robe I don't know his name is Samuel anyways he says hi <sighs> um, I think we're ready to roll all right so we're going to look a little bit at her life on earth she goes don't read too much into that <laughs> okay all right um, if you know 
anything that's not our business, I'm not going to pick up on necessarily. So just tell me what it is that you want to pass along. She has a spiritual guide with her that's showing her how to pick cards, which is really interesting to me. Um, standing behind her and helping her to choose. Okay, hang on, I'll show you. Okay. I don't know if that was long enough, but if you need to, just go back and pause the video, I guess. So in her life, there was a lot of suffering. She suffered a lot. But that wasn't my entire life, she says. I don't want you to think that that was my entire life. But it was a very common theme throughout her life was um, like struggle and pain. She says that was part of the life I chose. And it's not that, um, it, now it sounds, it sounds really weird saying this because you know when we have our tough situations on earth or uh, we are dealt certain cards in our life that are absolute crap or some people you know live uh, a certain life that you would not imagine willfully choosing but she says before i was born my soul made an agreement there were certain things that i wanted to learn and certain experiences that I needed to have. She learned a lot from the struggles and the suffering in her life. And it caused her soul to grow immensely. <clears throat> and she learned a lot. Some of this, she says, some of this wasn't apparent until I reached the other side, as we would call the other side. Hi, Stevie. We're reading on Space Mom. She kind of laughs that some people refer to her as Space Mom. It's kind of funny, but Stevie, you're laying right on my cards. I gotta move you. Anyways. <clears throat> Yeah, she said that she had learned quite a lot and certain things weren't um, apparent until she got to the other side, just how much she learned and how much she grew. There were some agreements that she made, she's telling me, there were some agreements that I made that I had forgotten all about until I returned home. Returned home being like when she crossed over. I imagine that was um, quite a shock, realizing, oh my God, I actually agreed to that before I came here. Um, but yeah, she had a very big purpose in this lifetime. What it, it sort of, I'm just seeing an image, um, kind of like a sliding scale sort of. And maybe on one end is like baby soul, <laughs> brand new, doesn't know really anything or, or anyways, from knowing nothing and then on the other end of the scale to like um, being more advanced and having grown a lot more. Now she didn't enter this lifetime as a baby soul. She's had multiple lifetimes here. 
And, um, yeah, come sit with me. Um, but this one in particular put her from, you know, somewhere in the middle of the sliding scale to all of a sudden, boom, her spiritual growth just jumped. It was exponential because of the experiences that she had in this lifetime. Okay. Okay, and then um, for a, a challenge, or sort of maybe the theme, or like the theme of um, certain obstacles in her life, we have the Knight of Wands. And with this tarot deck, the definition um, for this card refers to somebody who is very much life of the party, very fun guy, um, and just like super popular, and just, is like kind of always on the go. And she, what I am getting from her, her telling me, being the fun girl, the party girl, when she was younger, it did have some consequences. Um, she's showing me an image of like her pinky nail being uh, longer than the rest of her fingernails and um, Coke nail is what I heard. She did have an issue with certain drugs and other kinds of substances during her life, and there's no judgment. She's, she says she doesn't even have the judgment for herself anymore. She knows what she's learned from those experiences. But that was sort of something that was a challenge to her, um, always trying to be the life of the party and wanting to just sort of please everybody, and that became a little bit too much for her. So. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of getting the feeling that using certain drugs went from being a fun party thing to all of a sudden being a coping mechanism or something she thought she, you know, something she thought that she just couldn't cope without because this like trying to please everybody, trying to keep up with everybody, trying to um, be who she wants to be, but also be what everybody expects her to be and trying to balance expectations for herself and expectations from others, it became too much. Okay. And then I do have a couple f to sort of like look into um, her, her mindset or her kind of mental state for the most part while she was on earth. There's the emperor. Now, right side up, it refers to stability, possibly a father figure, but this was in reverse. So there was a lack of stability. She felt that there was a lack of stability in her life. Um, and, you know, having been famous, everything is go, 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 do this, do that, do these things. Um, you know, she is telling me, I would have an agent calling me one day and say, okay, we need you to be here and here today. And then the next day it would be something completely different and it would just, she would be so exhausted. And she just, all she wanted was just like a few days to a week off, you know, once in a while to just rest and to reset and to feel some semblance of stability. And then she says, my father left. And when her father left, I'm not sure what year or how old Carrie would have been when Eddie Fisher left or broke up with Debbie Reynolds, but that really, really had an effect on Carrie's mental health. Um, it, was a, it was a struggle when her father and her mother divorced. And I'm, she's not, like, she's been really silent when I'm talking about this. So I am getting there's some things that she doesn't, well, she doesn't really want to talk about, and it's not because it still hurts, it's just because it's done and over with, and she doesn't find it constructive, but um, she is sending me just this impression that there were things that went on with her parents' marriage before the divorce that sort of contributed to this lack of stability in Carrie's life. I know Carrie has a brother too, and I can't think of what his name is. And she says he's okay. <laughs> um, 
he he was okay, she says, but for her, there were just some things in, in that household, in that family life when she was growing up that were a little un unstable, and then some stuff in her adult life. The next thing is the Nine of Wands. She always felt like she would overcome her obstacles. The Nine of Wands just also refers to being like rather fatigued. She was tired. Like I, I had mentioned a minute ago when she was telling me that she just wanted to take some time to rest and just have a normal life and pretend to be a normal person for a, a week or so and how that was really not, it was almost not doable for her and her career and for all of these different things that she was doing. Um, and she felt like her life was full of obstacles and she overcame a lot of them. She's, she's patting herself on the back with like the smile. She's so silly. Um, <laughs> she is so silly. But anyways, we're going to take a look at what maybe sums up her early life. We have the Ace of Cups, like a brand new opportunity. This cup had just been taken out of the cupboard, you know, and it's like, what is she going to fill it with? What is she going to do with it? When she entered this lifetime, her soul felt very much like, oh my goodness, a new opportunity to do great and wonderful and big things. And her soul... So, sorry, my cat is making me itchy. Anyways, her soul saw this lifetime as a very special opportunity. And she loved it. It was hard, but she said she loved it in retrospect. There were things that, you know, went on in her younger life that were difficult, and we already kind of looked at that, right? But we do have this lover's card, and we do know she had a very strong bond with her mom. She says, my mom's here if you want to talk to her. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, and Debbie's not really saying anything, but she, she also is appearing young. Blonde, curly hair, and it's, it's up. I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of up like this. And the rest, instead of being in a ponytail or whatever, it's like all piled up in curls on top of her head. It's very, very pretty. I, I really, I like it. It's, it looks good. You're looking good. And she's so proud. She says, ever so proud. Um, and they had that really special bond throughout Carrie's life. I guess throughout both of their lives because they died within, what, two or three days of each other. That was a soul contract. I just heard that was a soul kind of pact, and that sounds weird, but a lot of souls do agree to, um, to incarnate together, and then there are some souls that agree to leave together, that, who decide to um, cross over together and go back to the other side together, and that was just something that they agreed on prior to them both being incarnated. And I guess Debbie decided to go first, obviously, because she's the mom. <laughs> she incarnated first. And because there's really no time on the other side, um, it just seemed like I'm getting an image of an angel sort of like, it's like skydiving. So the angel is like the, the teacher or whatever and is pushing them out of a plane. So Debbie goes first. The skydiver instructor counts one, two, three, and then pushed Carrie out of the plane. It's um, that all of that imagery I saw was quite symbolic, but it felt like no time at all had passed from um, when her mom's soul decided to incarnate and when Carrie's soul decided to incarnate. But in in Earth times, you know, it was like 20, 30 something years, right? Anyways. <clears throat> That's really neat. And we're going to take a look at sort of towards the end of her life. People admired her and admired her work. And I think she admired her work too. She says, I wasn't proud of everything. 
She said some movies were complete flops. Some stage performances, she says, didn't go well. But on the whole, I am proud. And you should be. And we have, even here on this card, people are looking on at the works that this woman here has done, and they're like, ooh, wow. And she, the woman on this card, is smiling like she's clearly proud of her handiwork. And this is the same vibe I'm getting when reading on Carrie Fisher. So, she, yeah, just like she said, there are some things she wasn't proud of, but for the most part, she feels like she did a good job with, um, like, the material aspects of life on earth um she says like she feels like she did a decent job in her relationships there were some things she could have done better i'm getting an image of paul simon in my head i think they were together for a while there were some things i could have done better in that relationship she says but live and learn <laughs> learn and grow ten of pentacles She's very, she was satisfied. She was quite satisfied with her life. Um, can't remember if Carrie had children or how many, but for the family that she left behind, um, including her brother, she felt like she left enough financial security for them she wasn't worried about um, how they were going to pay bills. She was not worried about how, you know, they were going to pay rent or, you know, how they were going to live when it came to the material stuff. She knew that she had provided enough for her family before she left. And at the same time, this is just showing um, that she left behind a legacy she left behind a big legacy and some rather large shoes to fill. King of Swords, but it was time. It was time. The King of Swords is the one that kind of lays down the law and reveals or, you know, shows that this is the truth of the situation. Um, kind of an overall, another sort of overall theme in her life. We do have the magician. Not everything is exactly as it looks. So there were times, Carrie is telling me, there were times when I was an absolute train wreck, she says. And she's like smiling, telling me this. So it's not hurting her at all to say these things. She, um, I am getting that she's surrounded by, there's like an, uh, there's a lady behind her and she's appearing. She's manifesting as like an old lady. She must be a grandmother or something because that's the kind of vibe that she gives off. And she's got her hands on Carrie's shoulders like this and she's kind of supporting her. That not everything was what it looks like. Um, so there are times that she said her life or that she was quite a train wreck. But on a soul level, her soul was okay. She was learning some very, very great things even in the worst of situations. A lot of soul growth. And then on the flip side of that, there were times in her life where she seemed to have everything together and the press kind of left her alone a little bit and everybody thought, oh, she's got it all, she's perfect. And yet she was struggling. And she says, Oh, I don't want to say don't judge a book by its cover. It's so cliche, but don't judge a princess by her space buns. I don't know. She just rolled her eyes. She rolled her eyes. It was. <sighs> she smiled and rolled her eyes at me. It was kind of funny. <laughs> but yeah, she says, yeah. Um, and just another thing is just the, um, the strength she had as like a manifester how she was able to meet a lot of her goals and how she was able to make a lot of her dreams come true. And the next thing is strength. The experiences that she had in this lifetime proved to her just how strong she is and always was and just how much stronger her soul has become.
Okay. Oh, on the bottom, the star. And in this lifetime, it was just something, it was just part of the plan to be very well known, to be very scrutinized. But at the same time, it wasn't always a bad thing being famous, she said. She did enjoy it. She enjoyed her fame. She said, I feel like I deserved it. She worked hard in all of her roles. Um, and she did the best she could with what she was given in life. And I'm, I'm glad to see that she really did enjoy her life. For the most part, she says, for the most part. Okay, now I gotta lift my cat's butt off of my cards. <laughs> now, what is a message that you have for us from the other side? What is a message that you want to pass along? Your mom's still there. Who is that? A grandma behind you? An ancestor, she says. It's an ancestor. Okay. <clears throat> She said, sometimes this life will get you down. There's the Ten of Swords. That's like um, kind of like a pain or, a, or like an ending or a, a, like a painful situation. So she says, sometimes this life will get you down. But don't let it stop you from being compassionate. Don't let it stop you from having empathy. And don't let it stop you from getting help when you need it. She says, there are many times where I didn't get help and I should have. And many times where she saw somebody else struggling and then to sort of make up for not getting help for herself, she tried to do something for the person she saw struggling. So it's, you know, through life's challenges, don't become bitter is another, that's the other thing she says, you know, be compassionate, get help for yourself, try to help others to get help for themselves. Do the best you can, she says. The sun, things are okay. Things really, really are okay. And it's just another reminder to, you know, to stay positive. Literally, sunny side, that is eggs, sunny side up. Keep on the sunny side. She says, the world is in your hands. It is your life. You can make things happen if you want them to happen. And just that you have more control over your life than you think you do. And something else with this world, she says, to describe my lifetime, she doesn't necessarily like the way that she went out, like the way that she died. No, she had a heart, heart issue or something. She says, but it's better than what it could have been. It's better than how it could have happened. She says, people have died in more embarrassing ways. <laughs> um, and she says, Despite that, she kind of describes looking back on her life and the end and everything is wrapping everything up with a nice little bow. She says, I lived a good life. She says, my wish is for you to live a good life and for you to see the good that is in your life too. And I think that's really sweet. I really enjoyed that. So with that, Thank you so much for connecting with us, Carrie and Debbie and Ancestor, whose name I actually did not pick up on. Anyways, I did hear Ethelene. Ethel, but Ethelene. 
interesting. Anyway, <laughs> um, and thank you guys for tuning in. And if you want more mediumship type readings, absolutely leave your suggestions in the comments. Tell me what you thought of this video. You know, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, notifications if you want notifications whenever I release new stuff on my channel. And with that said, Stevie and I both wish you an awesome weekend.